This is the 2012 MacBook Pro. I can't be the only one who misses that sound from older Macs, but this is a comparison video between the non-Retina MacBook Pro and the newer 2020 MacBook Pros. And if you guys do enjoy this content, please make sure to subscribe and leave a like. And how I wanna start this off is I want Steve Jobs to introduce the first unibody design in 2008. So we're really happy about this. And as a matter of fact, I'd like you to see it. It's so cool. So uh, if we could get the lights up, I'd like to actually pass one of these around uh, from one side of the aisles to the other so you can just see how beautiful and how, how high tech this is. All right, so I wanna get into a little story real quick of how I got this MacBook Pro. I've said it in a previous video, but for those of you who don't know, so I was in college in 2017 and I was taking an app development course that required a Mac because we were building them using Swift. And I didn't wanna pay for a more expensive MacBook Pro at the time, so I decided to go for an older model and specific, specifically get one that I could upgrade. But I got the mid-2012 non-Retina MacBook Pro, and even though it is a bit chunky, I was able to upgrade the RAM, and I took out the hard drive as well as the CD drive and put in a 500 gigabyte SSD. And I'm telling you, when I booted that computer up, it felt like a brand new computer. And it was able to do everything that I needed to do in that class at a very quick pace. And I also got it from Newegg for like 419, so I thought it was a steal. I wasn't gonna pay like three or four times that amount for a MacBook because I was still skeptical about MacBooks not being able to be upgraded. But anyway, that's how I got this Mac. So starting off with the specs. So the original specs of this machine, it was a Core i5-32M by Intel. It had four gigabytes of RAM. On your lower end, we have the Core i5 8th generation that comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, as well as 256 gigabytes of storage. The higher end model of the MacBook Pros, we have the Core i5 10th generation that comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. And the biggest thing to note between these two is that the RAM and storage is upgradable on here, whereas since the Retina model that came out in 2012, you are unable to upgrade pretty much any of the components inside these, unless it was the battery, but the battery is pretty hard to upgrade in these computers. So the whole Retina thing, I wanna get into that real quick. So it's really just this screen times two, and it's that you're not able to actually see the pixels on your screen. So that is the whole Retina display thing that Apple started doing back in 2012. It is a breakthrough in display engineering. Yes, it is a Retina display. <laughs> which means the pixels, the pixels on this display are so small that from a normal working distance, your retina cannot discern those individual pixels. And to use it is absolutely stunning. So the display, I will say, is much better on here. But one thing I wanna show you guys, is if you actually have these computers side by side, the screen is really hard for it to stay up. You notice that this screen itself is actually bigger it's a bigger panel on top than the older one. However, as you can see, the bezels are pushed out a bit more on the newer Macs. But I mean, I would say it's not by much. I mean, these bezels are pretty thick, but these are pretty thick as well. So I would say if you want thinner bezels, you probably have to option in to get that 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is money that I currently do not have. So next I wanna talk about ports because the port selection on this thing is incredible. Um, so we have the infamous MagSafe that everyone loved and still wants back. We have a Ethernet jack, a FireWire. Um, I don't know what FireWire is. I didn't know what FireWire was till I got this laptop. Never used it. We have a DisplayPort 1 or mini DisplayPort, two USB 3, an SD card reader, headphone jack, and the lovely battery indicator. I don't know why this, is, this isn't on modern Macs. I think this is a pretty useful feature. Um, one other feature that people tend to overlook is the Apple logo actually lights up on the back. I'll flip this laptop on the side real quick. And you can see that this one's a little bit more muted and this one lights up. So this is a feature that people loved on the older Macs. And then we have the CD drive on the right hand side. Whereas on this MacBook Pro, we have a headphone jack and then two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the side. But if you get the more expensive option, you get four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two on each side. 
So then comparing the track pads, as you can see the track pad on the newer Mac is, I wanna say double the size. And if you guys are curious about the track pad that I have on the non-retina MacBook Pro, it's just the D-brand Red Dragon skin. It does, it might look a little weird, but trust me, using it, it's not that bad. It actually feels pretty comfortable. It gives me a little bit of texture and all the gestures and everything still work. So there's nothing really to worry about when it comes to that. So next I want to get inside these computers and I'm using the iFixit toolkit. So starting off with the non-retina MacBook Pro, there are lots of screws on the back and it's a lot easier to open than the newer Macs. But once you get the screws out, you'll be able to see everything that's inside the computer. And then moving on to the newer Macs, there are less screws. However, there are clips that keep the bottom panel in place so you do have to unclip those and then you kind of have to add a little bit of elbow grease to get the bottom panel off. So looking at them both now they both have a single fan exhausting air out the back. We do have a old school style of battery whereas on the newer Max they are multiple cells. We have the motherboard laid out in pretty much the same orientation and position as the older model. This location here was where the original hard drive was, but where the CD drive is is where I have the SSD in all in one place. So that's why that place is available there. And then we have the exposed RAM on the older model where it is soldered on the newer Macs as well as the hard drive as well with the motherboard. So moving on to form factor, this one is definitely heavier. I think it's like maybe one and a half pounds heavier. That might not sound like a lot, but going to this more slim design it just feels more refined with the aluminum finish that it has. This one feels a little like the aluminum is thinner, even though I'm not sure if it actually is, but I would say that on the new more modern Macs, it feels like the aluminum sheet is more dense. So keyboard, keyboard is not the same. So there is a bit more key travel on the older MacBook Pro and it doesn't feel, it feels good, I actually do like the keys, although when you transition over to the newer Macs, there is a little bit less key travel and the keys are bigger. So I actually prefer the typing experience on the newer Macs with the new Magic Keyboard. Um, I skipped over the whole butterfly thing, so I can't really comment on that. Next, I'm gonna show you guys the camera and microphone and you guys can tell me the difference between the two and tell me which one you guys think sounds better. All right, so this is the MacBook Pro 2012 non-retina built-in display microphone. You guys can tell me how it looks. Judging from my perspective, mm, it doesn't really seem that Apple has improved that much in eight years, but in light, it looks perfectly fine. Okay, so this is the 2020 MacBook Pro, and I may have lied, this definitely looks a little bit better. The colors look more real to life, if that makes sense. But this is still a 720p camera in 2020, so it is a little bit disappointing by Apple. But you guys can tell me how the microphone sounds compared to the 2020 model, and we'll get back into the video. So next up is performance, and I know this is probably a section you guys have been waiting for. And I've gotta say that eight year difference of performance is quite some time. So this computer is definitely showing its age and I'll show you guys the charts. So in Geekbench 5, as you can see, the MacBook Pro scores drastically lower in not only single core, but multi-core as well. There's no metal score because metal isn't available on the integrated graphics in the older models. So you have to, so you have to use OpenCL. And looking at OpenCL, you can also see that the score is abysmal compared to the more modern day Macs. Moving on to rendering times, um, I was actually first uploading videos to this channel using this MacBook Pro in 1080p, and then I decided to move over to 4K. And as you can see in 1080p, it's not that bad. It's actually rendering them out pretty well. And moving on to 4K, you can definitely see a higher discrepancy between the older Mac and the newer Mac. It definitely takes a lot more time to render a 10 minute clip but it's still doable. The temperatures weren't that great. And another thing I wanna note is for some reason, the fans never reached max on here. It only just hovered around 4,000 RPM and then that was it. So the CPU 
was, I would say it was maxed out the entire time. It was hitting like 98. Occasionally it would go to 100, sometimes 101. So it got a little bit scary sometimes when I was doing that rendering test. So this MacBook Pro is definitely showing its age, but when it comes to doing basic stuff, like things that you would do on the air, uh, this Mac is still pretty good. It just feels laggy at times. Like you definitely notice that rainbow spinning circle more often than not. So for people who have the 2012 MacBook Pro, I think what we all think of is, is this the time that it's time to move on from this laptop and go over to the newer MacBook Pros? And I would say that now is actually a pretty good time. So I have two videos on my channel talking about the $1,800 version and how I don't think it's a good value for your money and you should get the $1,300 model. And I would say that if you are looking to upgrade, that you should look into upgrading to that $1,300 model. But if you're a person who doesn't like to upgrade their laptops too often, then I would say look into that $1,800 model. But if you are a person who doesn't mind the butterfly switch keyboards, I would also look into the refurbished store and the clearance store in Apple. You can get a very good deal on laptops if you look hard enough and often because good deals do go away. And they do come with Apple Care as well. I think they come with a full year warranty and you can buy Apple Care Plus on top of that if you are a person who's pretty cautious about um, warranty and whatnot. But, 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 sorry. Um, if you are a person who is using this laptop and it's still able to do majority of your task and it's not hindering you from doing anything, I would say that you can probably still use this laptop for maybe another year or two at most. And I mean, it's just, it still works. If it still works for you, then there's no reason to be upgrading to this laptop. Once this computer is showing problems for you and it's giving you too much of a headache, then I would say go ahead, upgrade to the newer Macs. These laptops are always gonna be around, there's no rush. So that's my comparison video between these two. If you did like the video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. I will be coming out with a ultimate buying guide of MacBooks and I promise you that will probably be the last MacBook Pro or just MacBook video for a while because it's what I've been posting for quite some time. But hope you guys did enjoy the video and as always guys, much love.